Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Um, thank you for joining me. I'm still new at this and uh, still a little bit nervous to be in front of a camera. Sorry, I have my laptop on, <laughs> on top of a bunch of um, board games to kind of prop this up. So, sorry if it's wiggly. In this video, I'm going to cover nonfiction reads for 2021. I just have um, a little too much to go over in terms of uh, volume, so I'm just going to split it up between uh, nonfiction, and then there's going to be a separate video that's going to cover uh, fiction, and there will be a third video uh, covering books that I wasn't, um, I wasn't really fond of. So we'll kind of go from there. The first book I'm going to cover is. Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. This is a memoir that um, it's a collection of essays. I'm, I'm really loving nonfiction memoirs in the form of um, essays, which is actually why one of my reads for this year is something um, in like a similar format. Anyway, so uh, this author is just so She's so vulnerable that uh, her anger and her pain uh, is so palpable in this. I have to say the first essay really just like had me crying and it was coming from a place of connection. She talks about uh, racism, but also in, like internal racism and and institutional racism, but she also talks about other subjects in terms of her writing this book, um, how she handles her art, uh, plagiarism in the art world, and there are subject matters that she withheld from putting in the narrative, but then she explores why she didn't put it in there in terms of plagiarism and consent and uh, it's really heavy, but it's it's such a good read. I mean, the moment I picked it up, I couldn't put it down. Um, I'm trying to think of something specific. Um, I think it's also her conversation around depression and how for her specifically, trying to find someone that connects with her to have those conversations without her having to expressively explain um, her culture. She is Korean American and how she feels like she doesn't have to go for treatment and then have to talk about an issue that's bothering her and then have to explain to her therapist all the nuances of being Korean descent, Korean American. Um, just having to hear those issues, um, she just puts it in a in a really honest, beautiful way, and um, I don't know. I just say if you can pick it up, it's it's one of my favorite nonfiction reads of last year. But I had, I think every single nonfiction read I read last year was just impeccable. So there are a lot of good ones. Okay, <sighs> my second nonfiction read is The Five. This is a a journalistic standpoint. Um, the author is Haley Rubin Hold, and in this piece, she explores the five women that were killed by Jack the Ripper. What I really appreciate about this work is that it's not some salacious, gruesome detail about how each woman was killed. That's not what this book is about. This book is about reclaiming the narratives and the lives of the women that were murdered and how um, there's this false narrative that has been created ever since these women were murdered that they were all were prostitutes and just that's just not the case and on top of that that's so much of a reflection of how society viewed women at that time the limitations on women you know they're just treated like they're meant to breed and, and be married and take care of the husband. And if they, you know, went for a walk out in public without a man, they were just, you know, in, in each of their cases, a big burner, they're just automatically assumed to be prostitutes. 
and how that hurt their case really ever being resolved. So it's a, a definitely a, such a, another great read that I love. There's just so much that I just didn't know. It is, it is incredibly sad. I'm trying to think if there's um, a quote that I could provide you, but um, I can't, I don't think Mark can see it. All right, I'll read this really quickly, and um, it's from two, page 289, and it says, At the time of the murders, the belief that Jack the Ripper was a killer of prostitutes helped reinforce this moral code. However, while it served an agenda in 1888, this often repeated line failed to serve any immediate obvious purpose today. Nevertheless, it is still the one fact about the murders upon which everyone can agree and yet does not bear scrutiny. That's just a little quote to sum it up, but um, this is another read that I really loved. If you like historical nonfiction, I'd say pick this one up. Let me see. So the next three I'm talking about are all also memoirs. Okay. I also read Heart Berries by Therese Marie Mailhaunt, and I'm going to read you the back. Teresa Marie Mailhot is from Seabird Island Band. She graduated with an MFA from the Institute of American Indian Arts. I'm sorry, that's my cat. <laughs> Keep shaking that. Where she now serves as faculty. She is, uh, oh, I'm going to say this wrong. I should have practiced this before I recorded. She is Tecoma, Tecumse, postdoctoral fellow at Purdue University. I just butchered that. I'm sorry. So this novel is also a memoir. It's very short. Uh, it's also a difficult read. Um, the author mostly, I mean, her main focus of this book is talking about her bipolar disorder, but also talking about um, indigenous issues colonization and um, the very personal uh, very personal impact from colonization how um, there are family members that were very much exploited and um, so it's definitely some tough subject matter but again it's it's a great read um, I, I I mean all of these books I love them so there's that um, another book by an indigenous author is A Mind Spread Out on the Ground by Alicia Elliott. This is another, <laughs> I'm going to say about all these books. This is another favorite of mine. Um, I'll read you the back. It says, uh, Alicia Elliott's writing has been published in the Washington Post, The Globe, and Mail of Ice, and the Best American Short Stories 2018 among others. She has been shortlisted for the Hillary Weston Writers Trust Prize for nonfiction. Born in Buffalo, New York, and raised between there and Ohio, she now lives in Brantford, Brantford Ontario, with her husband and child. So this book really covers her childhood and talks about her living on a reservation and off a reservation and the fact that her father is indigenous and her mother is white and um, the I guess this is the first time I'm really seeing it explored in such a way that's really delicate and I think respectful of her family and community where she's discussing um, racism within the family basically and you know um, she has a way that being so delicate and there's just so much love when it comes to the subject matter and so I'm trying to be as delicate as well so what she really talks about is 
the criminalization of poverty and how um, there are systems in place that are not really there to help or aid people that are in a poverty stricken situation. Instead, you know, there is um, systems in place to criminalize, criminalize it. And um, so that's really well explored, especially in her younger years. And what's also explored is her mother's bipolar disorder and, you know, also society's shame around uh, mental health issues, which also at times can be uh, criminalized. And I really appreciated the conversation she has around being someone that externally looks white, but culturally is indigenous. I felt like this is something that she talks about that's specific to her experience. And um, I don't think I've ever heard anybody else talk about that and the way she does in such a delicate, gentle way. Um, among There's other conversations about abuse. And I feel like similarly to Kathy Park Hong and Minor Feelings, there's just certain things that she decided not to put in the book and instead write the conversation around why she decided not to put certain information in the book and instead really wants the reader to question how they feel about her choice of doing that. Um, there's a section at the end that I wasn't expecting and I don't think I've ever really seen any other writer do this thus far. She basically creates like this questionnaire because she really wants um, the reader to participate in the conversation around abuse and how do you handle those situations when it um, involves someone close to you, someone in your family, and how you move through out life with those type of issues. So, um, anyways, I really loved it. That's another one. I, I haven't seen anything else come out um, by her, but um, anything else that she does, I will be reading. Okay. The next book, which is more of a a narrative in a humorous tone, is The Awkward Thoughts of the W. Kamau Bell. Um, gosh, I read this a while ago, so I'm trying to think about what I could say about this. I just remember that this book is such a joy. Uh, this is also, this is a linear tale, but it's also, I believe, like an essay form. Gosh, it's been a while. Yeah, this is definitely musing. Um, he goes on from his youth to adulthood, and he does a pro have a program, uh, a documentary type series on CNN. So he talks about his journey from stand up to what he has accomplished on CNN. So so much of his stand up, I guess he felt like he never quite found his footing, according to him, but that ultimately it's when he really tackled issues that were uh, close to his heart, issues that he experienced, um, that he really found his voice. And that's really a beautiful uh, evolution that takes place in the book. And what I really appreciate about this author is that he's willing to write in a way, actually him, <laughs> I'm going to bring her up again, Kathy Park Hong and Minor Billings, they both do this thing where it's like no bars held. They're going to tell their story warts and all. So he definitely also talks about um, anything that he kind of needed to work on internally um, to be more inclusive because the whole issue is if he's going to talk about certain subjects that he cares about, it's not just about uplifting himself, it's about uplifting everyone um, and it was just a very interesting conversation and I appreciated uh, the way that he handled it so this is another great read not as dismal as the other books I talked about so far and I think it's really just he's tackling subjects that are just as heavy um, 
you know, like racism, but and also being an interracial relationship, a marriage, but not just that, like the other previous relationships he has been in, and um, also the development of the CNN show and you know behind the scenes the kind of support that he needed um, to foster what he's created. It's really a beautiful tale and I think you will enjoy it. All right. I'm trying to think about what I'm gonna talk about next. The next book I'm gonna talk about is We Had a Little Real Estate Problem by Cliff Nesteroff. He's a Canadian author and he's, um, he's known like in the stand-up scene. I'm not too familiar with him. And he's written other nonfiction works. Again, I haven't read anything, read anything else by him except for, for this book. This is really good. I, when I picked up this book, because the focus of the book is all on um, comedians. I thought I was getting into a book that was going to be light. It's not, it's not light. This book is talking about the history of comedy, the influence and impact of in, the indigenous community on uh, comedy, how a lot of um, their own history is interwoven, you know, and in some ways um, at the forefront and creation of stand-up. It's such an incredibly interesting read. I've really grown to love reading uh, nonfiction history. I'm still kind of getting used to it. I think my whole life I've just read fiction. But uh, 2021 was a year of a lot of nonfiction for me. So each chapter is largely a profile of different people. And so he created a narrative that starts chronologically um, from modern times being at the end and historical times being at the forefront. The author definitely made, um, he made an effort to take himself out. He's not, he's not indigenous. He's a, a Canadian and that he, I've seen an interview with him where he says that he tried his best to just, when he talks about someone that's not alive because it's, it's historical knowledge. He'll insert himself because he's trying to um, create a narrative about that person that can no longer speak for themselves. But whenever it's um, someone from a modern day, someone that's alive that he's interviewed, he's gone at great length to like really take him out, you know, be the journalist that he is, and just let the person that he's profiling speak for themselves. And I feel like that really comes across. I mean. You can tell I love these books because I have so many notes on them. Um, even Stephen Graham Jones <laughs> uh, says something on the back, and he's a, a great writer too. So I wish I could give you an example of like how good this is, but it's kind of hard because they're all profiles. So it's not like I could really just boil it down to um, one specific quote. So yeah, what I really enjoyed about this was that he writes about people in the past that, uh, oh my gosh, what's his name? I think his name. He writes about people in the past that, uh, there's a gentleman, I know he's famous and I can't even think of his name. Um, Will Rogers, that's, that's who it is. He writes about Will Rogers in a way very much like uh, how W. Kamau Bell writes about himself, which is just warts and all, his whole life story, and, you know, just the fact that the narrative has been changed around this person to not really acknowledge his cultural identity and kind of, I feel like, rectifies that gives information about this person and actually early on in the career what an activist that they were. It was just, it was really enlightening. I enjoyed it. So um, another great read. Pick it up. <laughs> Let me see. The last 
memoir that I read, not the last nonfiction read, but the last memoir I read um, was Michelle Obama's Becoming. I mean, I don't think I need to say a lot about this, but um, she is just, Michelle Obama is such a great source of positivity and optimism, but is also someone that's very frank, and her ability to balance that, it, I don't think that's an easy balance, and this chrono chronologically starts from her childhood the moment that she leaves the presidency with her um, with President Obama at the time. And um, it's just a really beautiful tale of community, her family's influence on her. I love how she describes how she met President Obama. <laughs> that, that was to kind of jump into her lens and see her describe her husband and how other people will describe him before she's even met him was such a great joy. I spent so many moments, so many sweet moments, just kind of giggling to myself. And that's just kind of, um, if you're looking for like a feel good read, you know, this is, this is the one I, I mean, I, I love her to pieces. So um, let me see. I have two more to go. And these are both profiles, and it's Bookish Broads, Women Who Wrote Themselves Into History. I'm just going to read you the titles. I'm not going to, like, go on and on about these two. This one is by Loren Marino. And the other profile type book I read is Notab Notable Native People by Adrian Keen. So I'll just kind of... Both these books are wonderful. I think I'm just really big on profiles. I love stepping into not necessarily history, even women of modern time, and just kind of being aware, educating myself about all these incredible people that I wouldn't know otherwise. And to be honest, sometimes I read about people that I already know about, but it's just so nice to see um, writers or whatever profession these different people are in, um, get some sort of recognition and a profile on them. It's just, it's such a special, special feeling. Let me see. All right. So those are all my nonfiction reads for 2021. Um, I think this coming year, my goal is going to be focusing on increasing my reading. Last year, I only read maybe like 27 books, which is not great. In the past years, I would just kind of read like I'm drinking water. You know, I would read a lot, but um, actually during the pandemic, I've done the opposite. I've read less. I don't know. I've had a hard time concentrating. And so um, it's, yeah, it's definitely been not easy getting back on track. So this year, my goal is to read 50 books. I don't know how I'm going to do it. Some people kind of do a mix of um, audio and physical books. I'm not big on audio. I wish I was. I just, I haven't really been able to get into it. And I'm a multitasker type of person. So if I'm listening to a book, I'm going to want to clean. I'm going to want to like multitask around my house to get things done. I just, you know, it's, it's, um, something that you actively participate in, but I feel like it's not enough. So, and then, uh, the only other time I would be able to listen to audio is in a car, but because of the pandemic, I'm working from home. So it's just not very practical. So, um, yeah, that's definitely a contributed factor. Anyways, if you're watching this, thank you so much. Like, and subscribe. I'll get better at this. I'm just, I'm still a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm still trying to have like an anxiety attack while I do these. Um, but your support is really appreciated and stay safe and I'll see you later.